Now, every film has its kind of unique uh, aspects. Now, I understand James Cameron is a stickler for secrecy. Now, when you first saw the script for this film, did you were you handed a copy and you got to go home with it, or? What? No, like Jim gave me like he did to everybody else. He gave me the script, and I was in. And you know, this is I've done two films for him before. I mean, if Jim Cameron said like, "Don't show this script to anybody," I I wouldn't show it to anybody. If he said, you know, "Mow my lawn," I'd do it for him. You know, but he he uh, gave me the script, and I he sat in the office, and I sat there and read it, and he sat there watching me read it. And then when I was done, he said, "Can I have it back?" And I gave it back to him. <laughs> said, "I'll do it," and. Uh, it wasn't until a few months later that I got the script. Mel Gibson and I were interested in working together on this project. He ultimately passed, but but you know we were we were talking to to uh, you know him and people like that. And uh, Ed, you know, I think is is he's he's very well known. Um, I never perceived him not as a star in my mind. I mean, I don't know what that means. What does what does a star mean? Ed is a, is a phenomenal actor. You know, he was the right guy for the part. And when you uh, got the call that you got the part, what was your reaction? Uh, I was very pleased because I knew I was going to the Caribbean for a week to learn how to scuba dive. <laughs> so I screamed and, and called my parents. Now, a lot has been made about uh, the abyss and about the difficult shooting schedule. But you have a, um, um, I guess a habit of talking to the crew and giving them a talk before the shooting starts. What did you say to the abyss crew? I start out by saying this is the toughest shoot you are ever going to embark on and it is not for the squeamish. Um, you know, there are going to be times that you're going to want to cry, there are times that you're going to want to scream and hopefully there are going to be times when after you see the dailies you'll realize that we're creating something quite wonderful and it'll make it all worthwhile. worthwhile. Um, the problem of course was that no one takes you quite seriously until they're in the midst of it and they realize what they've um, embarked on. It was a long arduous shoot. Well, I knew it was going to be a very difficult shoot, very difficult shoot, because I'd done Aliens, and Aliens was no picnic either, because I'd worked with Jim before, and uh, I had a pretty good indication, much more so than the other actors. I can remember before we were shooting, we all got certified to dive, so uh, uh, after we all got certified down in the Cayman Islands, it was we'd been down there a week, and it was the last day, and they were down there, and everybody was partying and celebrating and toasting, and it was like we'd finished the film. And I was just looking at them, and I, I was going, yeah, I just, <laughs> they have no idea what they're in for, because there was such a sense of, you know, if anybody knew at that time what it was going to be like, it would have just been dead quiet, and everybody would have got up and walked out and not, never looked back. In the uh, premiere article, uh, the picture pointed of you is that you were, like, going every second, you were watching the video screen of dailies while you were decompressing. <laughs> what did you this do? What did you do to keep your sanity during the filming of that shooting? Don't think about it. <laughs> you just have to, uh, exactly that, you just have to keep going. You know, uh, I found that I was, that I was driving, so, uh, by the way, this isn't just me. Every director that's ever made a film has driven uh, himself or herself, you know, 16 or 18 hours a day and then slept like, like a dead thing, you know. <laughs> And that's basically what you do. That's the process of making a film. This particular film went for 140 some days, so that you know it had its own special problems of it being a marathon. You know, when you're down in <laughs> South Carolina, what did uh, the crew do to uh, you know get through the, the hard times? Wow, what did we do? We slept. <laughs> we were on a six-day shooting schedule, so. Sunday's people slept, and they got as far away from Gaffney as they could, you know. Um, it, was, it was hard. I personally knitted like a fiend. Even when I was in, the, in between shots in the submersible, I had my knitting down there with me. And <laughs> it, was, it was, I think I did five sweaters while I was there. I listened to this one Nat King Cole tape over and over again. <laughs> Variety is not, was not the spice of life for me, just the same tape. And, uh, um, basically thought about just getting through it, you know, just getting through it. I brought my horses down, actually, and I tried to go riding. I find that that lets off a lot of steam, and uh, you, you, you tend to um, not worry too much about problems when you've got an 1,100-pound 1100, 1100, um, horse uh, arguing with you. So you, at that point, manage to to completely forget all the problems and tensions that you're dealing with 24 hours a day. It was difficult at times, it was dangerous at times, but it was also uh, 
you know, extremely challenging thing that I felt very good about. Yeah, I remember when that came out, uh, Premier yeah. Magazine did a uh, rather lengthy article about the film, and yeah. uh, it made it almost like you know a, a dissension into hell for actors. Um, are you? Do you agree with that assessment? And, and what are your feelings about that film now? I think the film's really good for the first two hours. I think the last ten minutes or so is really embarrassing, and that's too bad because everybody worked so hard on it for so long. And that premiere article was really misleading because. I was at a conference of one of these things with a bunch of writers about talking about another film, Jackknife, and this gentleman from Premier asked me about The Abyss, and I said, I have nothing to say about The Abyss right now, I'm here to talk about Jackknife. And he persisted and persisted and persisted, and I finally said, look, I got nothing to say about The Abyss and I never will. It was kind of like, you know, to you. And so, of course, he writes the article and puts this right up in the middle of the page, which makes it seem like there's this huge... Uh, crisis of support for the film. Um, I worked on that film much too hard to not support it. Um, so, you know, things get blown out of proportion sometimes. Okay. And there's a lot of talk about this movie being James Cameron's masterpiece. Does that kind of talk bother you? Do you feel maybe the film's being typed too much? Well, I think it's, it's disconcerting you know, for a, for a filmmaker to have a film hyped before the fact. I think people should see the film and they should decide, you know, how how they react to it emotionally or, or whatever. But I, any kind of hype before the fact kind of kind of worries me a little bit, you know. And to say, w what is a masterpiece? You know, Ma Citizen Kane is a masterpiece. You know, I mean, this is my third film. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just to me, it's just the movie that I wanted to make, and that's that's all there. You know, that's the only way that I can look at it. I try to do the the best that I can on every scene within the film. I think in very pragmatic terms. You can't, as a filmmaker, I think, step back and see the whole picture, at least maybe not for 20 years. Okay.